Hello, welcome back to the Wrestling Newsroom. I'm your host, All Things Wrestling, and today we're going to be looking at all the WWE and TNA news of the last three days. We start where Ryan Satin, Satan, something like that, is reporting that China's mother is furious about the China documentary trailer that was recently released. Here is a statement she issued to ProWrestlingSheet.com. Thursday, on the first anniversary of Choney's death, I was completely blindsided with the documentary trailer producers released. Not only did the director release it, and without telling me, but he put in footage at the end showing Anthony her former manager, going into Choney's apartment. She added, it was supposed to be about Choney's life and her return to a stable situation, and then she died. And now it's all about the morbidity, the whole the whole thing, the spiral downward, and the eventual death. Choney would definitely not want to happen what is happening. I don't care what anyone says. I know her better than anyone, and I can say that for sure. Quite frankly, when she died, the whole thing should have been scrubbed. Uh, well, you have to respect China's mother's wishes. I guess on that one, I mean, it's a tough one, but there was nice things in saying how she revolutionised the industry, so it's a tough decision. I frankly think they should have kept it about the same subject, but shown, I don't know, it's a tough one. Uh, Either way, they're making the documentary, so what more can we say? Oh, and now, there is a... More news regarding Crazy Steve's department from TNA. There are reports that Steve has been offered a WWE deal as part of the NXT brand. Uh, oh, and as uh, he's left, the Decay group has been split up and Abyss is going back to doing his Joseph Parks gimmick. Why? Just why, Joseph Parks? He is shit. Just put him back as a proper Abyss, please. Ooh. Uh, oh, and in a recent interview with the Other Guys podcast, Cody Rhodes revealed what WWE had planned for him prior to his departure. At one point, the plans for me to be Stardust on one brand and Cody Rhodes on another brand. I thought that was a really great idea. Absolutely wanted to do it. Everyone wanted to do it except one person who will remain nameless, but that one person has the main vote. Vinnie Mac, by any chance, or Triple H, one of them. Uh, I kind of wish you'd say that would have been great. Okay. Oh, and Adam Rose recently did an interview with Chris Van... Fill it. And here are some highlights. Vince McMahon nearly played the bunny. Road Dogg was in a meeting for two hours before Raw to figure out who the bunny was going to be and they couldn't decide. I wanted Justin Gabriel to do it because he was my friend since I was 15 and he was 16. His dad trained me and we've known each other our whole lives. I said let's do it and he said well no one really knows him anymore and he won't get the reaction they want. Then it was suggested that Vince McMahon would do it and he was like what a payoff. I don't get it. They were like we don't know where to go so why not have a crazy billionaire do it. <laughs> and that sounds like it would have been mental. And um, uh, Ron Strowman working as a rosebud. Broad is the nicest person in the world. People don't know that. He and he has his voice, his this country voice. If he sings country music, you fall in love with him. He can sing a country song like no other. He has this amazing voice. At one point, he was my rosebud general because he used to control the others. I still remember at Raw this one time. Braun was yelling, "Everyone, listen up!" This is about Mr. Rose. It's not about you. And I was like, Braun, calm down. There's no need to be so hard about the whole thing. That was one Rosebud people remember. He'll never let never let him live it down. And I also remember being in the cooler position, Vince McMahon seeing him in his Rosebud costume and looking at Hunter like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> that, that's a nice little backstage story, I think, there. And now, Steve Austin on his latest podcast gave some critical thoughts on Seth Rollins. Rollins is somewhat over, but not all the way over. Not by a long shot. Now, I don't mean that that in a bad way. I just mean it being honest. He has relied on his sequences and has to let him carry him. To take him to the next level, he has to get more character development. When you say Seth Rollins, or if you want to say Seth freaking Rollins, I still don't have a sense of what or who this guy is, and the rest is on Seth Rollins' shoulder as an individual, as a performer, to define or create as well as a WWE because I still don't get a sense of what kind of personality he is. He also compared Rollins to Bret Hart. Bret Hart wasn't an over-the-top guy. He was pretty humble and very quite individual outside the ring. In so many regards, kind of what, like Seth, although Bret's an entirely different animal, but there's a case of the guys who's not a sh- sh- uh, showy kind of guy but a very conservative but as a highly defined gimmick and the badass gimmick and the world class worker. So Seth needs to work on this. Well, I'd definitely take Austin's criticism because he is one of the best superstars in the world. So you definitely need to look into that. But I do like Seth Rollins anyway. Oh, now an interview with Nick 
Who's man? Jack Swagger talked about possibly joining Impact Wrestling. It would be awesome to work with du Dirty Dutch Mental again. Good friend of mine, so we'll just have to see. In the progress of lining up a calendar and getting a lot of shows, I think I'm booked for the summer with shows, so I'm going to be somewhere. You can see me in Australia on Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore Tour. You also talked about the Korean indie wrestling scene. It's a great time to be a wrestler right now. It's so exciting. The opportunity out there is really taking control of your career and be the character you want to be. It's never been easier and there's never been more advantage. It really seems like it, we are kind of going back to the territory system where you see a lot of different promotions working together and you see brands growing out of that. Oh good, I like that. Jack Swagger, I do wish you the best of luck, mate. Oh, and Shaq talked about the plans for the Big Show match at WrestleMania and why it fell through because they kept playing. First they said they want me and Big Show and then they said they want a three on three, and then they cancelled it. So when they cancelled it, I made other arrangements, and then they tried to call me back and get tried to get it done. And I'm just like, I'm not going to do this. They messed it up. Fair enough, mate. I do respect your decision there. Uh, what is the, oh? Uh, CM Punk is joining a new TV show. Ten of the strongest athletes from across the sport sporting world compete for the ultimate bragging rights during a six week special. Champs versus pros. It's on MTV. Uh, I don't really know. It's not that interesting. I just thought I'd put it in here, but I realised I don't want to talk about that. Uh, oh, and now an inside source for your refreshing information about WrestleMania 33. We can now report that John Cena's marriage proposal actually altered the entire phase of WrestleMania, and the result of the WWE changing several matches, including scrapping the Undertaker John Cena. Um, John Cena uh, the idea of the John Cena proposal was pitched to Vince McMahon by Kevin Dunn McMahon sent several weeks pitching the idea to Cena who initially not in favour of the idea if he, if Cena eventually caved in and he was rewarded a short WWE championship run Cena was not initially set to win the title the Royal Rumble match was originally stated to be Undertaker vs AJ Styles with the dead man winning the championship Oh, why couldn't that have happened? Plans were scrapped for Shinsuke Nakamura to debut at WrestleMania 33. The Undertaker was then set to drop the title back to AJ at Elimination Chamber after being eliminated from the match by John Cena, setting up their match at WrestleMania. Uh, Styles was slated to defend his WWE Championship against Randy Orton, who would... Or who was always set to win the Royal Rumble. Original plans called for Orton to turn on Wyatt in the Royal Rumble, then defeat him at Elimination Chamber in a singles match. Uh, there were also scrap plans to have Shinsuke Nakamura debut as a Daniel Bryan surprise challenger for the Intercontinental Championship against the Miz. That would have been so goddamn good! Damn it! John Cena, you fucked everything up! Oh, and now in an interview with WWE.com, Roman Reigns commented on the death of his brother. Right now, it's one of those situations where it's a lot of mixed feelings. When you live in a big family, it's always great to be able to come together, but when you have to come together to send off a brother... And not only was he my brother, but in our family, even when your cousins were also close, we feel like brothers. That's the type of connection we have in our family. It was an extremely sad weekend, and it's still really tough. Everyone's grieving, but to see the family come together and have 100-plus family and friends come together to celebrate my brother's life really meant a lot. It just continually picks up our family and keeps moving on. Well, I do wish Matt, Rosie... Anawaii, sorry I did pronounce the name wrong I found out uh, to rest in peace I do hope you all can go with this bad time oh and in addition to Crazy Steve there is talks that former TNA star Gunner might be getting an opportunity with WWE, he'll reportedly join the NXT brand if he can pass a physical that's very interesting and now a very interesting Wikipedia page has come about uh, someone has made a page regarding the bullying accusations of JBL. I will link this in the description below. And then uh, some nice news. NXT star Roderick Strong's wife gave birth and Strong posted a picture to Instagram with the caption. Tonight, April 24th at 8.36, we welcome a beautiful 20-inch, 7-pound, 11-ounce baby boy, Troy uh, something Lindsay, into this world. Uh, well, that's very nice to hear. Congratulations to the both of you. Oh, and according to the Twitter account of Wrestling Revolver Promotion, Eddie Edwards suffered a knee injury and will be having surgery this week. Edwards' injury has been described as a minor one and he isn't expected to be out of action for long. 
That's good, because then again, the tapings have been done for like several weeks, so we should be fine now for that. Oh, and during an interview... No, sorry, Q&A, not an interview. AJ Lee talked about how she turned down Total Divas when she was asked about replacing JoJo. According to AJ, W offer her seven different storylines for her to pick from, and she stated it was odd to re- represent represent a real version of myself and had storylines. One day on Raw, Vince McMahon approached AJ and said, so you don't want to do the show? Well, tell us why today, next thing AJ knew, she was given a live mic, which led to the famous pipe bomb promo towards the other divas. AJ said Vince was proud of her afterwards. Well, good. I'm glad to hear. It's nice to know a bit of the backstage stuff. Oh, and according to HollywoodReporter.com, a biopic of the life of Vince McMahon is in early stage development. Uh, The film entitled Pandemonium will be made by TriStar Pictures. It will be directed by Glenn Vicar and Joe uh, Reaper, I don't know, with a script written by Craig A. Williams. Wow! I cannot wait to watch a Vince McMahon movie. I'm surprised you're allowing this to happen because he's not really nice for that kind of stuff. Oh, and the cafe breaking a report. Cafe has been broken. Sami Zayn uh, tweeted, playoff hockey will be the death of me. Hashtag go Habs go. Terry Steen, the father of Kevin Owens, replied, hang on, Sammy. And then Kevin Owens replied, Dad, no, what is this? My God, that sounds so funny! Oh my God, I, th- I thought I'd give a little smile to your face. It did me. Oh, uh, and there's ho- it's still apparently heat on Rusev about quite his hair. WWE superstars are expected to ask permission before they want to drastically change their appearance. This is due to the amount of money that the company invests in marketing. Changing the look to the extent Rusev did means program cards, stickers, books, DVDs, chairs, trucks, especially action figures featuring Rusev become dated. Mattel, the official action action figure distributor of WWE, spent thousands a year getting head scans for superstars so they can produce figures that look accurate. Rusev and Lana are said to have a double pack release in the coming months where Rusev will still have long hair, the, making it likely the sales of the figure pack will become weak. Damn it, Rusev. What you doing? Oh, uh, the biggest TNA story coming out. Not any of the spoilers for the tapings. I'm not going to spoil anything like that. The talk of Impact Locker Room over the last 48 hours has been what was described to PW Insider as a loud and ugly argument between Impact Executive Bob Ryder and Karen and Jeff Jarrett at the final Impact taping this past Sunday, the 23rd of April in Orlando, Florida. At one point, it appears that Ryder exited, had been exited from the company. Multiple sources stated that Karen Jarrett confronted Ryder, who was timing out the show, and began arguing with him over what was, of all things, a booking of a hotel room. Shortly after Karen dressed down Ryder, she left the scene. Several minutes later, Jeff Jarrett loudly confronted Ryder and told him, to not wait and leave the tapings. After his argument with Jeff Jarrett, Ryder paired up and left before completing his duties. We were told that Ryder and then had another argument with the Jarretts before getting in his car and leaving. Uh, there was a lot of sympathy for Ryder after the initial because his health has not been in the best in recent months. Sorry to hear that. Uh, a number of those we spoke to believed yesterday that Ryder was fired by Jarrett or Ryder quit after the argument with Karen. However, PWInsider.com has confirmed that Ryder was at the Impact offices in Nashville today working as per usual. It was believed that whatever spot the issue was settled once everyone returned to Nashville. Whether there had been any fallout to the scene in Orlando remains to be seen. Impact officials have been trying to keep the incident quiet for the last 48 hours. To the point the sources who are usually very open with me denied the incident. This is uh, nodq.com, I believe, or PW Insider. Not me, I don't actually have any sources. Uh, although dismissed as it was a pressure producing TV, although many, many confirmed the scene did indeed happen, and that moment it was as bad as you can imagine. Wow. He's apparently been with the company since 2002 and been responsible of talent relations, contract issues, logistics, handling travel. He would be the longest running regular employee there alongside Jeremy Borash, as one person told me yesterday, if Rod had left, that he would be the guy that knew every single body was buried. 
who know every single where every single body was buried. Damn. Uh, we have just a couple more stories. Uh, a very unfortunate story now. Rick Flair wrote on Twitter that his fiance was involved in a serious car accident, saying, "Please pray for my fiance, who was just in a very serious car accident. Car wreck. She is at the hospital." And then he would just get a little bit of an update saying. Uh, he went, Wendy will be okay. Thank you for all your messages and prayers. Well, I'm glad to hear that, mate. Makes you have the best and speediest recovery. Now, Jinder Mahal's new allies, previously known as the Bollywood Boys, will now be known as Sunil and Samar Singh, moving forward. And the last story is a nice one, kind of. In a recent interview with Josh Barnett, Triple H talked about Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre being brought back to WWE. Jinder is a guy who's always worked extremely hard. He trains hard. He's very intense about what he wants in his career. He's very thoughtful. That's the same with Drew. The opportunity came for them when they were too young and not ready for it. A little immature to it. When they left, I had a conversation where I told them, we're not going to be able to do more with you here. Go other places. Learn more in your career. Mature. And I think, and think about the business in different ways. Sometimes you get reliant on other people telling you what to do instead of going out there and figuring out for yourself what is you have to do to Jinder's credit and to Drew's credit they left they went and they figured out for themselves they improved they're both men now as opposed to kids trying to make it in the business they see their careers differently and what they want they're extremely hard workers they're great people hopefully they are in a better position to succeed well that's a nice little overall positive way to think about it saying get the fuck out you're not good enough Kind of. But yeah, it's been a bit of an ups and downs episode today with the stories. We can obviously all wish Rick Flair's fiance a speedy recovery and to uh, Bob Ryder, I believe it was, who's not got the best health. May he be recovering and getting in better health. But as always, this has been the Wrestling Newsroom. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like. Please support me on Patreon, link in the description below. Subscribe to see more content and I'll catch you later.